Thanks for joining me on my next video. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. It definitely helps me. Um, so in my last two videos, I changed the front uh, engine mount on a 2007 Honda Accord V6. And uh, in the other video, I changed. Uh, so that was the front one over here. I changed that. And I also changed the passenger side uh, transmission, engine mount, whatever you want to call it, on this side. So now I'm going to be changing the... Uh, driver side transmission mount and it's located underneath the air cleaner so sorry the air uh, the, the air intake here so what I've done here is I've removed my battery and I'm going to proceed to remove the air intake here before I go on I just want to show the part that I'm going to be replacing it with I'm not promoting anyone or any specific brand but this is what I purchased online it's Westar that's the uh, model number EM9220 and that's what it looks like that's what I'm going to be replacing Okay, so to get to the driver's side engine mount here or transmission mount, you need to remove uh, the air intake here. I just started doing that, but um, you can remove this bracket here or just loosen up this, uh, this clamp. You need to remove this here, and it's just one of these clamps here. Basically, you just squeeze it, pull it off here to here. Once that's done, you'll be able to pry this out. One thing I do want to mention, there's a couple of clips holding this wire here. That's what they look like. And there's one over here. And there's one back there. So if you can manage to get your hands underneath and kind of just try to squeeze these things together somehow and just pop it up. It's a little challenging, but uh, if you wiggle it around enough, you'll get it. Hopefully you don't break it. So this here is just a 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter bolt, there's one on this side, and there's one on holding this bracket here as well. So, so 10 millimeter bolts right here. So once you have that off, I'm going to proceed to pry this off here and see if I can get that up. If there's anything else I need to remove, I'll let you know. So there is a little um, over here, it's on this side I believe. Once you start juggling this out of the way, you'll find that there's uh, there's a cable here, and I'm not sure if you can see it, it's right there. My hand is, that just kind of slides off this bracket here, so you just gotta kind of get that off. So it's right here, just try to move this off of here, and that way it's not holding you up. So I'm gonna try to do that off camera, it's kind of hard to hold the, uh, hold the camera and film at the same time. Okay, so I struggled a bit trying to remove that um, from the bracket here, this thing here, and, and what I ended up doing is just removing the eight millimeter bolt that's attached to the, uh, the air intake uh, unit here. Um, it looks like there is a little clip that you're supposed to squeeze and pull, but there's a lot of crud in there, so it probably was preventing me from squeezing it and allowing me to release it. So I took the easy way out, I just removed the bracket. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this air cleaner so I can access the uh, amount. Once I remove those uh, those bolts, those cables, the um, clamp here, I was able to pry out the uh, air intake and remove it. This is where the, the mount is for the tranny and it's underneath this bolt here. So what I'm going to do is remove that but before I do that I'm going to jack up the car, support the tranny and uh, put a brake in behind my wheel my rear tire and make sure that the e-brake is on as well. Okay, so I already had done that from my previous video, which I'm continuing. So, yeah, bother. Uh, so I had already jacked up the car, put two jacks, and I also have um, my jack here with a big piece of wood here just supporting the tranny. I didn't lift it up too high, just enough to support it so it doesn't drop when I remove the bracket. And I've got a brake here just uh, behind the rear tire. And as I mentioned, my e-brake is on. Safety, safety's number one. Safety's paramount. Uh, do whatever's necessary to make sure you don't get hurt, especially if there's someone else around in case something were to happen. Anyway, so back to what we're doing here. Um, the mount is basically this piece here. And to get to it, we're gonna remove this bolt here. I'll tell you what size that is in a second. Okay, so that's a 14 millimeter. I'm just gonna use my uh, 
two foot pry bar to uh, to remove that as soon as I get it. Okay, so I've got my two foot pry bar here. Gives a nice torque, and I'm just gonna break that bolt. Though. And once I have it loose, I'm just gonna take it out with either the air gun or my ratchet. So hang loose. Okay, so I loosened it with my pry bar, and then I just uh, took it out with my air gun. This is it. I'm gonna put that aside along with the bracket. As you can see, this mount looks like it's all pretty much uh, busted, and that's not the reason why. This car was making all kinds of sounds when I was idling, when I first started up the engine, started up the car, or as I'm driving, I noticed uh, making quite a bit of sounds. And if you look at, check out my other video where I changed the front mount, you can see uh, how, high, how high up the engine would go. I actually move when I would um, put the car in drive, hold the brake, and rev it slightly. Anyways, there's two bolts. Not sure if I can get to those to show you. There's one here. There's most likely one on this side. You can see it underneath there. And I'm going to uh, get a ratchet in there. I'll tell you what size that is in a second. Okay, I'm going to make some uh, room for myself. So I'm going to remove the uh, the pan here where the battery sits just so I can get uh, tools in underneath here. There's a total of three bolts that goes onto that mount. And I'll show you with the new one what it looks like. And here's the new one. And those are the three bolts. I'll tell you what size those are in a minute. As I mentioned, this is the top uh, bolt that mounts onto the bracket here. And that was the 14 millimeter. So I'll let you know what size those are in a minute as soon as I get to them. So just going to remove this for now so I can have more room to work. Okay, so with the top uh, bolt and bracket removed, we're going to proceed to remove these uh, two 14 millimeter uh, bolts here and that will give us access to be able to get underneath here to get access to those uh, those three bolts. I just loosened the two bolts. They weren't too bad actually. I used a breaker bar but they came off quite easy. And I'm just going to make sure I put them back where they belong. This is the shorter one that's closer to the firewall to the back of the car. This is the longer one. This is closer to the front of the car. Here's the bracket. I'm going to just remove this. Here you go, that's the bracket. There's only one way in, you can't make a mistake. Here's the longer side to the front, the shorter side to the back, and this part that uh, mounts onto the, uh, the mount. So I'm gonna put that aside. As you can see, when I took that out, a piece of the mount just came flying down. That's uh, a good indication this thing is all busted as I showed you earlier, so. Now I should be able to access those three bolts that are on the actual mount, and uh, they should be 14s. I'm just gonna check those out quickly here. But you know, yeah, they're definitely 14s. So I just want to show you what I used to access this bolt over here. I've got a wobble uh, socket end here and also a wobble extension and just a ratchet. This is all half inch and I was able to break it. And then I'll just remove this and I'll do the same for the other two. So I was able to loosen the second bolt on this side just using a swivel uh, ratchet and a swivel uh, socket end here, closed socket end. So I was able to use this just to maneuver myself in there and uh, manage to loosen that up. So I'm just gonna remove that and then tackle the last bolt, which is the, the one in the middle down here. So the other two outer bolts were quite easy to uh, break and uh, remove. Uh, this middle bolt was, is a bit of a challenge. So what I ended up doing is just cutting out whatever was here from the rubber so I can get my pry bar with a short stubby uh, socket and I managed to get that in there and break the bolt so now I could just take a regular ratchet and remove it. So I managed to remove the final bolt, the one in the middle and here's what the old bracket looks like, the old mount sorry and here's the new one as you can see everything in the middle is intact so I'm going to proceed to mount this Okay, so I got the new bracket in place and I've got the three bolts mounted. Um, they're 33 uh, foot pounds. Uh, I don't have a torque wrench that's going to fit in there or what have you, so I'm just going to eyeball it. It's an old car, I really don't care too much. But I'm just stating the, the torque specs in case uh, you're doing this by the book. And there was no torque specs for these two bolts, so once I put those back or the top one, so I'm just going to do those about maybe at 40, 45 or something. Nice and tight and snug, that's the main thing. 
So it's a little awkward now that I've got the new bracket on. I can't really get a socket in here uh, as I did with the old one to remove it. So what I'm going to end up doing is just, uh, as I started earlier, to remove the uh, battery pan. There was an 8mm uh, socket here, uh, bolt here. Um, sorry, yeah, 8mm there. There's two 10s here. There's two underneath there that's holding it, and they're 12 millimeters. So I'm going to remove those so I can get this up and have some more access to that third bolt. So I was able to get one of the bolts from underneath the tray out easily. The second one was uh, kind of awkward, so I removed this plastic here intake here, and you can see the bolts right there. So I'm just going to remove that, and then that'll, that'll allow me to get the tray out of the way. So with the battery tray out of the way, I've got a lot more room now to uh, get access to those uh, bolts and tighten them up. In hindsight, I should have removed that tray earlier, I was just lazy, and it would have been a lot easier to get to these bolts. Okay, so I finished putting in the bracket bolts, and everything's all tightened up. I ended up just torquing these guys to about 47 pounds a uh, foot. I put the battery uh, bottom plate back in. Remember to put this uh, 10 millimeter uh, bolt in with the clamp here uh, for the wiring. The two 12 millimeter over here, and as I showed you earlier, there's two 12 millimeters underneath. You actually do not, I don't know if you can see it there or not, but you actually do not have to remove the entire bottom two bolts. You can actually just uh, loosen them and then the tray will just slip up. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to continue to uh, put everything back together and then just do a test and see how things go. This ground wire is looking kind of uh, frail here. Um, hmm, interesting okay something else to look at in the future what I did notice is this is quite loose here and it comes off quite easily so I'm gonna see if I can try to get that to uh, go in a little bit tighter because it's not clipping in like it used to I never removed it to be honest with you it must have come loose as I was uh, working away on these bolts so let me get that back together and then we'll do a test and see how everything goes oh one thing I did forget silly me I forgot to put the bracket so I need to put this bracket back on. So let me take that back off and put the bracket on. Okay, so obviously I forgot to put the bracket back on. So I took this off, put the bracket back on, torqued it, and I managed to get this clipped in so it's not uh, it's not coming out easily as it was before. I just kind of pushed it in a little bit further and it kind of clipped in. Okay, so now I'm going to proceed to put the battery uh, back in, the air intake in, and... Uh, Get it all back together, start it up, and uh, listen to see if there's any more uh, vibrations or any sounds that were there after I replaced the front mount. So I've got everything back together, mounted the air cleaner, sorry, the air intake, the battery, connected everything. And I'm going to do the test. I'm going to start it up. Hopefully all the sounds I was hearing when the car was idling or at first started up uh, are gone after having changed the three mounts. One on the front engine mount, passenger side uh, transmission or engine mount, and the driver's side transmission mount. I'm going to start it up and uh, after I start it I'm going to um, we're going to put it in uh, drive, hold the brake and have the e-brake on, apply a little bit of gas and see how much the engine goes up. I'm expecting it to not go up too much. I will share with you what the uh, what it was like uh, on this te specific test uh, prior to changing the three mounts and you will see that the engine definitely uh, had a lot of play. So here we go. So, so far so good. Any of those uh, knocking sounds I was hearing or rattling is all gone. Uh, definitely was because of those three mounts. And now we're going to do that test. As you can see, the engine's not really moving up high enough, uh, high as it used to, so that's a good sign. Okay, so that concludes uh, this video. Um, hopefully it'll be helpful for you and uh, please um, um, subscribe to my channel and give it a like. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions, uh, I'm more than open to comments and suggestions. Um, if you find a way, a better way of doing something I did throughout this video, please uh, share it in the comments. It might help other people who are undertaking this particular task or, or similar task uh, for a similar vehicle. So anyways, um, hopefully this was helpful and uh, thanks for joining me. Take care.